Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The end Triassic extinction event not only wiped out many of the stranger archosauromorph groups, but also provided a golden opportunity for many animals to thrive and diversify. Well-known examples of the latter, of course, include the dinosaurs and pterosaurs, but some derived pseudosuchians also got in on the act. With many of the archaic ichthyosaurs and sauropterygians now out of the way, opportunities emerged for one particular lineage, the Thalatosuchians, the so-called marine crocodilians. These animals first appear in the fossil record during the early Jurassic, with the oldest forms being superficially gharial-like animals, with elongated narrow snouts equipped with small sharp teeth, indicating piscivorous diets. The group may have evolved in the brackish coastal environments and shallow seas that covered much of Europe and North Africa at this time, where most of the earliest forms have been found. By approximately 199 million years ago, the Latisutians began to diverge into two major lineages, with these being the Teleosauroids and the Metriorhynchoids. The former were more unspecialised animals, not being especially well adapted to marine ecological niches, retaining scales and osteoderms, suggesting that they inhabited relatively shallow coastal waters, as some modern crocodilians do. The Metriorhynchoids, on the other hand, possessed strong adaptations for a life spent in the ocean, with members of this clade developing flippers, fluked tails, and smooth, scaleless skin. At least some genera would have given birth to live young as well, a very rare feat among archosaurs as a whole. The exact phylogenetic relationships of Thalatosuchians have proven difficult to pin down. This is not helped by the fact that the group appears quite suddenly during the early Jurassic, with most basal forms already being quite similar to their later relatives. It has been proposed that Thalatosuchians were either crocodiliforms, quite closely related to Notosuchians and Eusuchians, or were the sister group to crocodiliforms as a whole. Interestingly, a very recent study published in January 2023 has named the oldest and most basal member of Thalatosuchia. This was Ternosuchus hinglii from the Charmouth Mudstone Formation of the UK, and dated to roughly 190 million years ago. Although known from relatively partial remains, this was an important find as it pushed back the origins of Thalatosuchia into the Triassic, partially closing a gap in the fossil record. Measuring about 2 metres or 6 feet long, Ternosuchus would have been a narrow-jawed, gharial-like animal that inhabited warm coastal seas, likely feeding on fish and cephalopods. All more derived members of the clade evolved from forms similar to this, with the then European archipelago probably being the centre of their development. The oldest teleosauroids were also found in the UK, with the basal Plagiophthalmosuchus, known from Yorkshire and also Luxembourg, in deposits dating to about 183 million years ago. This genus possessed a highly elongated flattened snout and would have been a specialised piscivore, a trait carried on by the teleosaurids themselves. These animals were originally regarded as marine analogues to modern gharials, as they both typically share long, tubular snouts and narrow teeth. However, differences in the jaws, teeth and skeleton of different teleosaurids suggest that they were more ecologically diverse than this. Earlier teleosaurids were coastal, semi-aquatic generalists such as Mystriosaurus, a 4 metre or 13 foot long genus native to the UK and Germany. Later forms were more specialised, including the semi-terrestrial and heavily armoured teleosaurus while Bathysaurus, on the other hand, was a more exclusively marine genus that inhabited deeper waters and had lost much of its osteoderm armour. Teleosaurids inhabited most of Eurasia, ranging from what is now Portugal to Thailand, and thrived during the Jurassic, becoming extinct at the end of the period about 145 million years ago. Their sister group, the Machimosaurids, were generally larger and persisted into the early Cretaceous, while basal forms were also long-snouted piscivores, as was the ancestral condition for Thalatosuchians, this family became larger and increasingly durophagous as time passed. Most Machimosaurids were over 5 metres or 16 feet long, such as the interestingly named Lemisuchus from the Middle Jurassic of Peterborough, England. Although the holotype was first described in 1909 as a species of Steniosaurus, 
It was recently classified as a different genus in 2017, and named after Ian Lemmy Kilmister of the band Motorhead. At up to 5.8 metres long, and possessing blunt conical teeth set in relatively short jaws, Lemmysuchus would have been a durophagus predator somewhat like modern alligators, when adapted for crushing the hard shells of turtles. Its close relative, Machimosaurus, was the youngest formally described member of the family, as well as the most successful. Native to Europe and North Africa, up to five species have been described and named, with each varying in size and ecological niche. The largest and most impressive was Machimosaurus rex, which dwelt in what is now Tunisia and measured up to 7.5 metres or 23 feet long. More massive than the modern saltwater crocodile and probably weighing at least two tons, this wide-skulled predator was capable of targeting relatively large prey as well as hard-shelled turtles and ammonites. It was a marine species that was well adapted for life out on the open seas. However, it may not have been the largest teleosauroid. A currently unnamed specimen from the Beremian stage of Columbia may be in the region of 9.6 or 31 feet long. The other major lineage of Thalatosuchians were the Metriorhynchoids, which were far more heavily adapted for a totally marine lifestyle. The most basal of these were forms such as Pelagosaurus, from the early Jurassic of Western Europe, a modestly sized genus that measured between 2 and 3 metres long. This animal possessed a long streamlined snout, a tail with fin-like attributes, and paddle-like limbs for swimming in the warm, shallow waters of its time. Pelagosaurus had up to 30 teeth, suitable for hunting and grasping fish and crustaceans. Indeed, one fossil specimen was found with a leptolepsis, an early teleost fish, in its stomach contents. Its forward-facing eyes and streamlined body suggest that Pelagosaurus was a pursuit predator rather than a scavenger or ambush hunter. Another basal form, Magyarosuchus, was larger at up to 4.83 metres long and possessed a mosaic of anatomical features, including a fairly well-developed fluked tail but lacked flippers. Metriorhynchidae as a family emerged during the Middle Jurassic about 168 million years ago and represented a further step towards fully marine lifestyles. These animals developed true flippers, as well as shark-like tail fins, lacked scales or osteoderms, and possessed reduced limb musculature. These were quite remarkable pseudosuchians in that they were the only known group of archosaurs to adapt to fully pelagic niches, with their limb structure making it impossible to move about on land. This, when combined with an unusually tall hip opening, suggest that at least some metriorhynchids gave birth to live young, much like ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs. The family could be divided into two subgroups, with these being metriorhynchinae and geosaurinae. The former were generally modest in size and possessed narrow snouts indicative of piscivorous diets. Indeed, some species, such as Racheosaurus, were among the smallest of Atosuchians, measuring up to 5 feet long and weighing a mere 22 pounds. The Geosaurians, in contrast, were larger and more heavily built, being capable of targeting bigger prey. Their skulls were quite robust, being equipped with powerful jaws and sharp stabbing teeth. Basal forms such as the Middle Jurassic Italian genus Neptunidraco were probably still largely piscivorous, however. More raptorial adaptations emerged within the tribe Geosaurini, with these animals being adapted to prey on marine creatures larger than themselves. The ridiculously named Tyrannoneustes Lythrodectos, which means blood-biting tyrant swimmer, would have been an intimidating hunter that measured up to 5 metres or 16 feet long and possessed ziphodont blade-like teeth, well suited for tearing into the flesh of small ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs. These adaptations were continued in the more diminutive Geosaurus, a 3 metre long blunt-snouted predator native to Western Europe during the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous, as well as in the closely related, more massive and widespread Dacosaurus. This genus possessed an enormous range that encompassed Europe and the Americas, clearly being a successful apex predator of the time. A streamlined animal, with teeth superficially similar to those of modern orcas, Dacosaurus would have utilised its powerful jaws to rip and tear flesh from its prey. Its skull was robust and blunt, more closely resembling that of a theropod dinosaur than a modern crocodilian. These ferocious dragons of the deep 
persisted into the early Cretaceous, albeit with significantly lower levels of diversity than during their Jurassic heyday, a situation similar to that faced by the ichthyosaurs. The Latasutians vanished from the fossil record about 125 million years ago. For reasons that are not entirely certain, their decline may have been caused by a mixture of a cooling global climate and perhaps competition from the diversifying plesiosaurs. With their passing, archosaurs would stay out of entirely marine niches, vacating them to be held by other pelagic reptile groups. The Thanatosuchians were truly one of a kind, being yet another example of the sheer diversity of Pseudosuchians during the Mesozoic. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the Astrapatheas, the trunked and tusked mammals of Cenozoic South America. So until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.